folks. C for Comedy, A for Abbott, M for Maxwell, D e for Ennis, L for Lou Costello. Put them all together and they spell Camel. Experience is the best teacher. Try a Camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking Camels than ever before. And draw up a chair for tonight's Camel Show, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. <laughs> Here. You're late again. Where, now, where have you been? Hey, Abbott, I just come from the, the contractor that's building my new house. It's going to be a house with seven gables. You mean seven gables? Nope, seven gables. When I build a house, I want it well built. I... <laughs> you dummy wasting your time with a contractor when, when you've only got 48 hours to get rid of that money that you won last week before income tax time was due. I'm trying to get rid of the money, Abbott. Well... Yesterday, I bought a 1923 Maxwell for $75. But with it, I had to take $400 worth of accessories. $400 worth of accessories? Yes, I had to buy two horses to pull it. Oh! You idiot. $400. You've got $38,000 to get rid of. And you've got to get rid of it and make sure that you don't get it back. Okay. I'll get rid of it so I'll never... It'll never come back. How? I'll lend it to Europe. Uh... <laughs> Costello, this is ridiculous. Why don't you just take the $38,000 down to the income tax office and pay the tax on it? You can't do that, Abbott. I figured it out last night. And $38,000 will not pay the tax on $38,000. Oh, please, please, talk sense. Look, did you send in your estimated income for 1947? You know, that's the one where they ask you to guess how much you're going to make this year? Oh, sure, I sent it in, but I didn't sign it. Why didn't you sign it? If they want me to guess how much I'm going to make, let them guess who sent it in. Uh... <laughs> Well, uh, how, how about deductions? My what? Uh, deductions. Like, uh, when I filed my tax, the man wanted to allow me $500 for my wife. For your wife? That's way over ceiling. Hey, uh, look, uh, <laughs> I'm talking about dependents. You see, everybody comes under a different tax table. Now, if you're single, you come under one table. If you're married, you come under another table. That did it, Abbott. I ain't paying no taxes. Why? I refuse to do business under the table. Oh, <laughs> Costello, you're impossible. You'll never figure that tax out. So you've got to get rid of that money. Now, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. The best place to lose money is at the racetrack. Racetrack? That's wonderful, Abbott. I love horses. My favorite story is about a horse named Black Beauty. Black Beauty? Yes. Once about a time, there was a little horse named Black Beauty. His mother was a bronco, and one night she died of a cold. Oh, she, she had pneumonia. A... She what? She had pneumonia. Yeah, it was bronco pneumonia. Bro bronco <laughs> Oh, Rabbit, will you keep out of this? All right. Why don't you go over to the livery stable and show them what a real jackass looks like? Now, let's... <laughs> I'll have you understand I'm no jackass. You're no jackass. No. Your ears are too long. All right. All right. Go on with the story. Okay. Now, the farmer who owned Black Beauty, he loved them. And he used to brush and comb the horse. Yeah, no, then no. He... You mean he curried the horse. Why should he curry him? Black Beauty was big enough to walk. All right. Wait. Now, every morning, the farmer would feed Black Beauty. Yes. Black Beauty uh, ate his father. Yes. And after he would eat... He ate his father? Certainly, every horse eats his father. You mean he eats his father? Uh, yes. And his father eats his father, and his father eats his father. Pretty soon there won't be no fathers left for Father's Day. Uh, <laughs> I mean, to feed a horse, you take a bag and, and put its father in it and hang it on his nose. Now, ain't that a pretty picture? Black Beauty walking around with his father hanging on his no, nose. No, no. <laughs> Never mind that. What's the rest of the story about Black Beauty? Well, Black Beauty liked the rain. Every time it would rain, he would run and run and he would run in the water. In other words, Black Beauty was a mother. Yes. Now, one day, Black... <laughs> could I have that again? He was a mother. Black Beauty was a mother? Mm -hmm. How could a he be a mother? <laughs> Ain't a she a mother? Certainly not. Sometimes a he makes a better mother than a she. Well, we learn something new every day. <laughs> Listen, Abbott, suppose a mama horse has little horses. Don't that make her a mother? Well, now that depends on her feet. Yeah, and then... <laughs> well, if you ask a silly question, you get a silly answer. No, 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 Costello. I own racehorses and, and have one of the finest mothers in the world. What has your mother got to do with horses? My mother is a horse. Now that you mention it, I see the resemblance. Uh, here. <laughs> now, one day, everybody on the farm was very, very sad. The farmer was sad. All the little horses were sad, too. 
They were so well, sad just a because... second, Lou. Lou, wait a minute. Don't break me sad. down. Why was everybody so sad? Black Beauty was limping around. Oh, it's too bad. There was something wrong with his front legs. Mm-hmm. The farmer took Black Beauty... No, no, Beauty no. He had out... something wrong with his forelegs. Yes. And then after... <laughs> Would you mind running that past me again, please? I said he was having trouble with his forelegs. I just told you he limped on his two front legs. Well, Costello, a horse's forelegs are in front. His forelegs are in front? Yes. What are those things in the back? Crutches? No, no. You don't understand. A horse has forelegs in front and hind legs in back. Forelegs in front and hind legs in back? Right. What are we talking about, a horse or a centipede? Listen, you listen, listen, please. I'm trying to tell you that a horse has four legs in front. Oh, Abbott, you're sure his four legs are in front? Certainly. Okay, then tell me this. What keeps his tail up? I... <laughs> his hind legs. Look, when I say that the horse has four legs in front, I don't mean that his four legs are in front. I mean his four legs are in front. A horse has four legs. Uh, but all four of them are not four legs. Oh, when you say that a horse has four legs in front, you don't mean that his four legs are in front. You mean that his four legs are in front. A horse has four legs, but all of them are not four legs. Now you've got it. Now I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Experience is the best teacher. A young man and his girl at a dance. Let's sit out this dance. I'd like a smoke. Cigarette for you? Yes, please. Goodness, it's nice to be able to get the cigarettes you want again, isn't it? Uh Uh-huh. But you know, I learned something during that cigarette shortage. By smoking whatever brand I could get, I learned that there really are differences in cigarettes. I found I liked camels... So much yes, better. the experience of smoking whatever brands of cigarettes they could get during that wartime shortage taught millions the differences in cigarette quality. Smokers' tea zones that's tea for taste and tea for throat, tested brand after brand. It was then that Camel's rich, full flavor and cool mildness registered so enjoyably with smokers that... Today, more people smoke Camel's than ever before. Yes, during that wartime shortage... People smoked whatever cigarette they could get. But when they could get and again choose, millions chose Camel. Experience is the best teacher. Try a Camel. Now, while you enjoy a Camel, Skinny Anna sings, Linda. When I go to sleep, I never count sheep. I count all the charms about Linda. And lately it seems, in all of my dreams, I walk with my arms about Linda. But what good does it do me, for Linda does know I exist. Can't help feeling gloomy, think of all the loving I've made. We pass on the street, the heart skips a beat. I say to myself, hello Linda. If only she'd smile, I'd stop her a while, and then I would get to know Linda. But miracles still happen, and when my lucky star begins to shine, with one lucky break, I'll make Linda mine. It's a beat. I say to myself, hello, Linda. If only she'd smile, I'd stop her a while. And then I would get to know Linda. But miracles still happen. And when my lucky star begins to shine, with one lucky break, I'll make Linda mine. Now, Saturday night is the deadline for income tax, and you've got to lose that money. Now, I'll tell you how to bet, because you don't know a horse from the side of a barn. That I know. I do, too. Test me. All right. Look over there. 
What is that? A horse or the side of a barn? Abbott, this time you're right. I... <laughs> See, you know absolutely nothing about horses. You don't study form. You don't know track conditions. And with no information whatever, do you know what can happen to you, Lou? Yes, I can win. You can ask. <laughs> Costello. To lose, you've got to play long shot. Now, I've got a horse that goes off at 20 to 1. Well, let's hurry, Abbott. It's half past 12 now. Oh, there's no hurry. No hurry. No hurry. He doesn't go off till 3 o'clock. I thought you said he was going off at 20 to 1. He is. He goes off at 20 to 1 at 3 o'clock. How can he go off at 20 to 1 if he goes off at 3 o'clock? Listen, no matter what time he goes off, it'll still be 20 to 1. It'll still be 20 to 1 at 3 o'clock? That's right. Abbott, let me smell your hair. What do you mean? Go ahead. Uh-huh. No smell, just as I thought. You've been drinking the hair tonic again. <laughs> you cut that out, Costello. You've got to lose that money. Now, the smart thing to do is buy a dope sheet. You can get smart from buying a dope sheet? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, if you have the dope, you're smart. Is that clear? Oh, sure. The horse goes off at 20 to 1 at 3 o'clock. Ah, uh, never mind that. Hey, I think that fellow over there is selling uh, tip sheets. Let's ask him. Say, mister. Yes? Do you sell tips on horses? As Dr. Livingston said to Stanley, you came to the right place. I've got Joe's tip sheet, Henry's tips, Eddie's tips, and asparagus tips. <laughs> asparagus tips? That's for green horse players. <laughs> well, we'll take Joe's uh, tip sheet. Is it any good? As the Queen of Sheba said to Solomon, it's wonderful. <laughs> Look, mister, mister, forget that. We want a tip sheet that picks losers. Losers? Losers. Well, <laughs> if you want to lose, I've got a horse that goes off at 20 to 1. At 3 o'clock? <laughs> no, 4.30. Look, mister, I'll cut it off! <laughs> Look, mister, as Dr. Jekyll said to Mr. Hyde, take a powder. All right, quiet, Costello. <laughs> mister, give us a copy of Joe's uh, tip sheet. Fine, there you are. And as young Dr. Malone said to Ma Perkins, that will be five dollars. <laughs> okay, okay, now I'll be able to pick the horses. Oh, you mean you want to use Joe's tip sheet to pick the horses? Well, in that case, you'll need a copy of Henry's tip sheet. You see, that explains what Joe's tip sheet is all about. How much is that? Ten dollars. Okay, I'll take it. Let's go, Abbott. Uh, just a minute, Fatty. Can... <laughs> can you read the code in Henry's tip sheet? Oh, sure. I can read... What code? Aha! Uh -huh. Well, then you'll need Don's tip sheet, which explains the code on Henry's tip sheet, which picks the horses in Joe's tip sheet. That'll be twenty-five dollars. Oh, come on, Costello. We've got to make some bets and lose that money. Nothing doing, Abbott. I can lose all my money right here. <laughs> hey, here's twenty-five dollars. Thank you. And as Mrs. Chip said to Mr. Chip, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Hey, Abbott. Hey, Abbott. What? I don't need this guy's tip sheets. I got something right special from the feed box. What is it? Oats. I and they're so rich. <laughs> Now, look, Costello. Hey, they're skinning in it. Maybe you can give us a loser. Hiya, fellas. Hey, what time is it? Three o'clock. Good. I got a horse that goes off at 20 to 1. <laughs> How can a horse go off at 20 to 1 at 3 o'clock? Now, just a minute. I'm the straight man. <laughs> Skinny, Costello's got a lot of money to lose. Do you know any slow horses? Why, sure. Play Ashcan in the third. Now, wait a minute. Are you sure Ashcan is a slow horse? Is he a slow horse? Boys. If Paul Revere had ridden ash can, you'd be doing your baseball routine about cricket. <laughs> about cricket? I wonder how it would sound. Whom is on first? <laughs> Come on, Costello. Let's call for the first race. Let's get a bet down. I'm going to play Whirlpool. Here, mister. 500 on Whirlpool to win. There on. Hey. Hey, you got the bet down just in time, Costello. They're off. I hope Whirlpool doesn't win. Abbott, the only way that horse could win is if he had an outboard motor attached to him. <laughs> well, he couldn't have won without it. <laughs> you idiot. Now you've got more money than ever to get rid of. Hey, look. Look at that lady's program and see what she's marking. Maybe she'll pick a loser. <clears throat> Pardon me, madam. Could you sort of... Look well, if it isn't Mr. Orbit and Mr. Costello. Oh, hello. You fought, little mon, you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here at the roost trot? Roost trot? <laughs> oh, Abbott, you know what a roost trot is. That's where they ruin the hooses and the roosters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love to 
to come to the truck and place my wadges with the book mookers. What a co inky dinky. <laughs> I come here to drink Coca Cola and eat Frankfurter and try to pick a wiener. <laughs> Toddling along. As we say in French, je suis de la pigale in la qu'est-ce que c'est to you? And a juicy dill pickle in the kitchen to you, too. <laughs> Costello. Hey, Costello, we should come to the track more often. <clears throat> All the big movie producers come here, and, and we might make some good contacts. Yes, while they're looking over the horses, they might think of a part for me. They might think of... <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> well, hello, Miss Rabbit. Where are you going with that big bale of hay? Oh, pardon me, it's Costello. <laughs> oh, my, I just love the racetrack. You know, my late husband said I had the makings of a great horsewoman. You're saying that wrong. Your husband said you had the makings of a great horse, woman. <laughs> Costello, you've just got time to play the third race. Now, look, let's try the old-fashioned method. Stick a pin in Mrs. Uh, Wetwash's program and play whatever you pick. Okay, Mrs. Wetwash, may I borrow your hat pin? Yes. Thank you. Now hold up the program. I'll close my eyes and stab it with the hat pin. <laughs> Costello! Costello, you stuck Mrs. Wetwash with the hat pin. Look, she's jumping the fence. She's out on the track. At the corner, Mission Bell is going to the front. Busy B is second. Hey, just a minute, folks. There's an added starter out there. That's a strange-looking nag, but brother, can she run? <laughs> now you did it, Costello. <laughs> Mrs. Wetwash is running in the race. She'll probably win and pay a lot of money. And the winner is the added starter, which has just been identified as Mrs. Wetwash. <laughs> Isn't that a silly name for a horse? <laughs> That's a silly name for a woman. I wonder what she paid. Mrs. Wetwash went off at 20 to 1 and came in at 3 o'clock. How do you like that? Now the racetrack announcers are doing our routines, have it? <laughs> Presents lovely Marilyn Maxwell from Metro Golden Mayor, producers of The Beginning or the End. And for camel fans everywhere, Marilyn sings. When he don't sweet talk anymore, his kiss ain't like it was before. It's time you added up the score, my friend. That's the beginning of the end He keeps you waiting for a day Makes no excuse for being late Wake up and recognize your fate, my friend That's the beginning of the end What he's doing to you he did to me, but I was in love, so how could I see? Better be wise, better be aware, or one of these days you'll turn around and he won't be there. Don't say that you never told. I know that character of old. When he starts straying from the fold, my friend, that's the beginning of the end. One of these days he'll turn around and he won't be there. Take it from me, I know that character of old. From the fold, my friend That's the beginning of the end According to a recent nationwide survey More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette This survey included doctors throughout America Three leading independent research organizations asked 113,597 doctors this question. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. 
If you're seeking rich, full-bodied tobacco flavor for your taste, if you're on the lookout for cool mildness for your throat, why don't you try a camel now on your T-zone? See if you don't say, like millions of other smokers, camels suit my T-zone to a T. Costello, we came to the racetrack today to lose money, and all you've done is win. Now, if you're stuck with that bankroll March 15th, you'll really be in trouble with your income tax. I can't help it, Abbott. Gambling runs on my family. My uncle Artie Stebbins was a big gambler, too. He once crossed a racehorse with a chicken. He crossed a racehorse with a chicken? Yes. Yeah, what so for? It, so it could lay odds. Lay... <laughs> Pardon me, gentlemen. <clears throat> uh, would you like to buy a sweepstake ticket? They're 50 cents apiece. Oh, sure. Here's $50. Give me a hundred of them. Hey, wait a minute. The price marked on these tickets is $2. How can you afford to sell them so cheap? The race was last year. <laughs> now, would you like to take a chance on this punch board? It pays 500 to one. Now, wait a minute. The punch board is all punched out. I know, but where else could you get such beautiful odds? <laughs> Say, mister, who are you? Now, let me think. Oh, uh, I've got some business cards in my pocket. Would you mind reaching in and pulling one out? See, my hands are all covered with fingers. Uh, uh, <laughs> Costello, there's something, something peculiar about this man. Look, he's wearing an iron watch chain, and it's six feet long. Well, oh, that's all right, Abbott. He's got a police dog in his pocket. Uh, <laughs> pardon me, sir, but uh, what are you doing here at the racetrack? Oh, I own the grace horse, uh, Numbskull. My wife gave him to me for bur my birthday. Your wife gave you a horse? Yes, yeah, she didn't want me to have anything sharp. <laughs> your wife must write your jokes, too You haven't had anything sharp in the last two minutes <laughs> oh, boy. Well, gentlemen, I've got to go now I've got to hang up my horse Hang up your horse? Yes, he's a Mustang And he must hang someplace <laughs> Abbott, they ought to send that guy to the United Nations Conference As a delegate? No, it's a problem Oh, <laughs> come on, Castell Let's take a look at his horse, Numskull he may be just the horse to lose your money on. Oh, Louis, Louis Costello. Costello, here's Marilyn Maxwell. My, but you look pretty, Marilyn. That's a lovely dress you're wearing. Oh, it's just something I threw on. You must have flown a curve. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> you smell good, too. Oh, that's my new racetrack perfume. Chanel, number eight to five. <laughs> Gee, Louis, didn't we have fun in the movies last night? Yeah, I thought Ray Milland was wonderful in that picture, California. Mm. But I think you have a much better looking map. Than Ray Milan? No, than California. <laughs> hey, look, Costello. There's that Daffy guy's horse, Numskull. Oh, what a cute little horse. Come on, I'll introduce you to him. Numskull, this is Marilyn. <laughs> hey, look, Costello. Here comes Mrs. Wetwash. Well, well, Costello, what horse is that? This is Numskull. Numbskull, meet Mrs. Wetwash. <laughs> oh, what a clever horse. You know, I love horses. Oh, can't get any men to go out with, huh? <laughs> now, listen, little fat boy. You embarrassed me this afternoon. But I'll forgive you for making me run in that claiming race. <laughs> I hope you noticed that I won. Yes, and I also noticed that nobody claimed you. <laughs> well, come on, Mrs. Wetwash. Let's go make a bet on Numbskull. See you later, Louis. Hey, okay. look, Costello. There's our pretty little filly. She costs $3,000. Her name is Minion. $3,000 for a filly, Minion? <laughs> <laughs> that must include mushrooms and French fried potatoes. And, and look at the next stall, Costello. There's the mayor with a colt. The mayor has a colt? Yes. Well, if he's got a colt, why don't somebody give him a handkerchief? <laughs> Get him some four-way cold tablets or something. No, no, no. He doesn't need tablets or a handkerchief. I'm talking about a colt. That mayor has a colt. The trainer will take that colt and teach it to run. They got to teach a colt to run? Naturally. Brother, when I get a colt, it runs all by itself. No. <laughs> Talk, man. Look. Hey, look, Lou. Here comes the groom with the horse's bridle. He's getting ready to lead her away by the halter. Abbott, stop the wedding. Stop the wedding. <laughs> sure, by the time the horse's groom leads the bridle to the halter, that colt will start running and she'll sneeze right in that groom's kisser. <laughs> Come on, Costello. That's the post call for the last race. And you've got to bet on a loser to get rid of that money. Remember your income tax. Have it. I'm going to bet it all on Numskull. I've been looking up his form. He's got to lose. What does the form say? Well, it says he was beater at Santa Anita. He was an also ran at Tanferan. 
He came home in the dark at Hollywood Park and showed a weakness in the preakness. <laughs> okay. Numbskull it is. Let's get the bet down. <laughs> Skull by two lengths. Banjo is second and Bazooka is third. Oh, no. Oh, no. They're coming into the stretch. Numbskull is in front by three lengths. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and the winner is Gertie's Corset. Did you hear that, Costello? The winner was Gertie's Corset. That was a tight squeeze. <laughs> Well, we did it, Abbott. The money's all gone. I don't have to worry about no income tax. Attention, everybody. Hold all tickets. There's been a disqualification. Gertie's corset got rough in the stretch and broke in front of Numbskull. How do you like that? They busted Gertie's corset. And here is the judge's decision. The officials are putting up Numbskull's number and taking down Gertie's corset. <laughs> you hear that, Costello? Numbskull's number is up. So is mine. Alcatraz, here I come. Come on, Evan. <laughs> Evan and Costello will be back in just a moment for Camel Cigarettes. During the war, the makers of Camel Cigarettes sent a total of more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. Now free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Louisville, Kentucky, USAAF Station Hospital, Bowling Field, Washington, D.C., U.S. Naval Hospital, Santa Margarita Ranch, Oceanside, California, U.S. Marine Hospital, Mobile, Alabama, and Veterans Hospital, Northport, Long Island, New York. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are still stationed, and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now, back to Bud Abbott, and Lou Costello. Uh, well, Costello, you didn't succeed in getting rid of that money, did you? No. So now you've got to pay income tax on it. Oh, I don't care, Rabbit. I'm a happy guy. I'm always happy in the springtime. Say, that's right, Costello. Next week is the first day of spring. I have an idea. Let's get together next Thursday and plant, uh, plant a nice garden. I'll help you sow the seed. Sow the seed? Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter? Is it torn? Uh, now, wait a minute. Don't start that. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, everybody. Abbott and Costello next Thursday when Costello plants a spring garden. Don't miss it because Bud and Lou are going to do their famous sow the seed routine. Smokers, if you want to give your pipe real pipe appeal, pack your pipe with Prince Albert. Yes, just see if Prince Albert doesn't make your pipe extra appealing because it combines rich, full-bodied tobacco flavor with cool, tongue-easy mildness. Prince Albert is specially treated to ensure against tongue bite and crimp cut to burn slow and even. So pack your pipe with good PA for pipe appeal. More pipes smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco. Saturday night, hear Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry, the rollicking foot-tapping fun show that stars Red Foley, singer of American folk songs, and his guitar. Don't forget that Saturday night on NBC for Grand Ole Opry with Red Foley, the Duca Paduca, and Minnie Pearl. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S. Abbott and Costello will soon be seen in the new Universal International picture, Buck Privates Come Home. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. <laughs> Stay tuned now for the Eddie Cantor Show. 